I'm going to show you how to create a keyboard for your VR application or game. This can be useful for searching, logging in, chatting, or anything that requires the user to type in VR. Let's get started. So let's get started. The first thing that you want to do is import a VR button package. The link is in the description so you can go ahead and download it. And then after that you want to go to assets, right click, import package, custom package, and select the VR button. If you want to learn how to make this button from scratch, you can watch my other video on that. Now that we've imported it, you can see that we have all the files. And the next thing that we want to do, we want to go to our project settings and then go to tags and layers. And from there for number six, we want to put hands for seven interactive for eight typing hands and for nine keyboard. We're going to be using these layers for our objects and for our keyboard. And then you want to make sure that the typing hand is only interacting with the keyboard and that the hands are interacting with interactive and that the hands are interacting with all the other objects as well. After that, we want to create an empty object and we're going to call it keyboard. And from there, we're going to create an object inside of it, which is a cube and we're going to call it board. And then we're going to rescale it. And this is going to be the base of our keyboard. We're going to go ahead and change the material of the space and give it a gray material. After that, we want to create another empty object and call it buttons and another one called typing area. For buttons, what we want to do is create an empty object under called normal. This is going to be the section for our normal buttons. And the other section will be for our caps buttons when we press on the caps. Under that, we're, we're going to add numbers, which is going to be a section for numbers. And we're going to create our first button for our keyboard. So we're going to import the square button to our scene. Lift it up so we can see it. And from there, we're going to add, do some edits to it so we can turn it into a keyboard button. So we're going to rename it to keyboard button. And we're going to unpack the prefab completely. After that, we want to go ahead and add a canvas with text mesh. And then it's going to ask you to import it. We're going to import this package. And if you go back to your assets, you can see that the project has imported it. So we're going to rename the text mesh pro to but button text and we're going to change the canvas to world space and rescale it so it's the size of our button now we're going to change the text to one because that's going to be our first button just number one and we're going to change the font size. Next thing, we want to rotate our canvas. We're going to put 90 degrees and put the canvas on top of the button. Perfect. Next thing we want to do is drag our canvas under the press component because that's the component that is going to be going up and down when we press the button. Next, we go to the collider and remove the function under on release. And we're going to go to our keyboard button. And then go to our scripts and create a new script. And we're going to call the script keyboard button. Then we're going to go to our keyboard button object and we're going to add this keyboard button script. And I created two more scripts, one called keyboard and one called typing area. And these are going to be useful for our keyboard. 
So we're going to edit our keyboard bun script. And then as you can see, I went ahead and opened all three scripts that we've created. In the keyboard, I deleted the update function and I'm using text mesh pro. Now I'm going to declare some variables. One called input field for the input field that the keyboard is going to be typing in. A section for the normal buttons, another section for the caps buttons, and a boolean for caps to check if it's on or not. Now in the start, we're going to set caps to false. And we're going to create a function called insert character. And it's going to take a parameter string. And it's just going to add the text to the character to the text. And delete character is going to do the same thing. But first, it's going to check if the input field has an characters in it. And if it does, then it's going to use a substring to basically just take the length of the current string minus one, which is going to be basically deleting the last character. And then we're going to create another function called insert space, which is just going to add an empty space. Then we want to create a function for the caps button and check if caps is not on. Then we want to disable the normal buttons and enable the caps ones. And then set caps to true. However, if caps is on, then we want to turn off the caps buttons and then activate the normal buttons and set caps to false. Next, we're going to go to our keyboard button script and we're also going to put using TM Pro. And then we're going to delete our update function and declare some variables. The first one is going to be our keyboard and the second one is going to be button text. So in the start function, we're going to get our keyboard from the parent object and we're going to get the button text from the children object. And then we're going to check if the button text dot text dot length equals to one. That means it's either a letter or a number button. And we're going to call a function called name to button text. After that, we're going to get the component children, the button, and we're going to add a function to it. So when we press it, the following happens. So when we press it, we want to insert a character and we want that character to be the button text dot text. Next, we're going to write our name to button text function, which is basically going to be converting whatever uh, the name of the object is to the button text that we see. Finally, we're going to go to our typing area script and we're going to delete the start and update functions and we're going to declare some variables. So the first one is going to be left hand and we're just going to copy and paste it. And then second one, right hand, the third one, left typing hand, and the last one, right typing hand. And then we want to put on trigger enter and we want to search for a component called OVR Grabber in the parent of the collider that enters and set it to game object hand. And we want to check if hand equals to null, that means it's not a hand, and we want to return. Otherwise, if hand equals our left hand, then we want to set our left typing hand active. And if hand equals the right hand, then we want to set our right typing hand to active. Next, we want to do on trigger exit, check the objects that are leaving our typing area. We're just going to copy and paste, but the only thing is we're going to set it to false if it leaves. And there you have it. We now have our scripts ready to go and we can go back to Unity. Now that we're back in Unity, we're going to go to our typing area and we're going to add the typing area script to it. And then we're going to go to our keyboard and add the keyboard script. Next, we're going to go to our prefabs folder and we're going to drag the keyboard button into it so we can create a prefab out of it. And then we're going to rename this button to one. And from there, we're just going to set up the position of the button and we're going to duplicate it to get a bunch of other buttons and just relocate them to the correct position. 
After that, as you can see, I'm renaming the buttons. And if you notice, the text doesn't change. That's because the text on the button will change once we start our application. Then I'm going to duplicate the numbers section and I'm going to call the section letters. Then I'm going to create an empty object called row one and I'm going to add all of these to row one under letters. And then I'm going to move the buttons down. Then I'm going to rename them to the buttons that I want, which are currently on the first row of my keyboard. And as you can see, when we play, all of the buttons are renamed to what the game object is named. Next thing we want to do is create another copy of row two and just rename the letters and same thing with row three to whatever letters I want. I'm going to delete some letters because there's some of them were extra. Then I'm going to move the numbers outside of the normal section and duplicate the normal section and call it caps. And this is going to be for the caps section when you press the caps button. Then I'm going to go to the letters and just make them capital under the caps section. After that, we're going to go to our project and we're going to get another keyboard button, put it under buttons. And then we're going to rename it to caps button. And we're going to unpack it. And we are going to rescale it to make it a bit bigger than the other buttons. And this is going to be the button that we're going to be using to turn on the caps. We're going to resize the text and we're going to write caps under and change the width so it fits all the text. Next, we're going to go to the collider and we're going to add the keyboard to the on release events and then go and select caps pressed function. Next, we're going to duplicate our caps button and we're going to rename it to delete button. Then we're going to change the location of it and adjust it and change the text under it to delete. Then we're going to go to our collider and select the delete car function. And lastly, we're going to duplicate it again and we're going to create a space button. We're going to go under and make sure that the string under our button text is empty and that the function in the collider is the insert space function. Yeah. Lastly, we're going to add our normal and caps sections to our keyboard script on our main keyboard object. And then under our typing area, we want to create a cube. And this cube is going to be the collider for our typing area. We're going to rename it to typing collider. From there, we're just going to copy the board scale and then paste it onto the typing collider. Then from there, added the collider. And as you can see, we're going to lift it up. And this is going to be the area where our hands activate when they enter them and we can type inside of this area. Yeah. Next thing we want to delete the mesh renderer and the mesh filter component from the typing collider. And we want to select is trigger for the trigger in the collider. And then we're going to change our keyboard layer to keyboard and the typing area layer to interactive. And select yes, change children for both of them. Then we're going to go ahead and delete our event system and then create a canvas. 
and we're going to call it input canvas and then select world space for render mode and adjust the position and scale as necessary. And then we're going to select and create an image, call it background inside of our canvas and set the width to 400 and the height to 400, which is the same width and height as the canvas. And our image was too small, so we're going to increase the scale of it a little bit and then move the position behind our keyboard. Then we're going to select dialog for the source in the image. And then we're going to increase the scale of our canvas a little bit and create a text mesh pro input field under our input canvas. And we're just going to call it input field. Lastly, we're going to go to our keyboard and we're going to put the input field into the input field section on our keyboard script. And then we're going to delete the event system again. Lastly, we want to go to our OVR player controller and select our hands and put them in the hands layer. And then after that, we want to go all the way under to our index finger and then create a sphere. And we're going to rename it to typing sphere left because it's under the left hand and rescale it to 0 0.01. We're going to add the black material to it and move it towards the tip of the finger. And then we're going to change the layer to our typing hands layer. And then we're going to do the same thing after, but in the custom hand right. We're creating typing sphere right and rescaling it again, moving it towards the edge, adding a different material to it and putting it in the typing hands layer and disabling it. Then we're going to go to our typing area and we're going to add the typing sphere, sphere right to our right typing hand and for our custom hand right to our right hand and do the same thing with the left hand, add the custom hand left to the left hand and the typing sphere left to the left typing hand. Lastly, we're going to go to our keyboard and we're going to add some rotation to it so it's easier to type. And then we're going to go to our caps buttons and disable them in the beginning because we only have, we want one section enabled at a time. And then add a rigid body to our typing area and set it to is kinematic and turn off use gravity. Last thing we want to do is go to our keyboard button prefab and increase the size of the collider a little bit so our button is more efficient. And there you have it. We should be all good. We save our button and we are now ready to go test in the headset. Now that we're in the headset, we can see that we have our keyboard in front of us. We can go ahead and bring our hands into the typing area. And as you can see, the typing spheres get activated. And from there, we can use them to type any letters or any text that we want. And we can use the caps and delete and space buttons. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments what you want next. Thank you for watching.